I am Beth, and I'm the group executive for personal injury at Eye Care in New South Wales, and I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. So today I thought I would cover how Eye Care uses technology to transform workers' insurance in New South Wales to a fairer scheme. I'll also discuss our claims model and how technology in that model enhance the customer experience. Finally, I'll touch on our net promoter score survey that scores us on a continuing basis on how we are performing with our customers and what plans we have coming up to meet our customers' needs. Hmm. Yay. <laughs> Great leader, thank you. <laughs> so I care, as most of you know, is a broad organization which supports the community through lifetime care in motor accidents, dust diseases care, workers' compensation across both the private and public sectors. We also protect the assets of New South Wales, such as schools, hospitals, and the Harbor Bridge. With respect to the um, private sector of workers' insurance, this is where we are at today. We collect about $2.7 billion in premiums and receive about 67,000 claims per annum. We cover 3.2 workers and 326,000 employers. We have 288,000 policies that renew each year, and the scheme is actually growing by about 37,000 policies per annum. We pay out almost a billion dollars in weekly benefits and over 650 million in medical payments to support recovery and return to work. We began our transformation program four years ago to ensure a fair workers' compensation scheme for all of our customers. This is at the center of what we do and is reflected in our work across the workers' insurance spectrum. Whether with work, injured workers their employ, with their employers to ensure our products meet their needs or with medical professionals and scheme agents or brokers. Our claim service has two key customer groups, employers who hold the policy with us and workers who are beneficiaries of the claim service. We aim to empower both of these customer groups within the claims process by providing easy access to information and services that lead to the best claim and return to work outcomes. Our underlying goal is to make the system fairer, financially sustainable, and customer-centric with improved experiences and outcomes. There are many metrics used to understand whether we are achieving this goal, such as return to work, funding ratios, claims expenses, net promoter scores, and most importantly, we speak directly to our customers. Four years ago, these metrics painted a picture that not only led to the creation of eye care, but necessitated a new approach to how we managed claims. So why was the new claims model needed? We undertook extensive research, including over 25,000 survey responses, meeting with 1,300 employers and their industry advisors through group sessions and webinars. This year alone, our mobile engagement team has traveled over 65,000 kilometers, meeting with customers large and small and in metro and regional areas. Employers told us they wanted better communication, a better claims process, and lower premiums improved renewal, policy renewal processes and improved customer service, whereas workers, quite similarly, wanted improved communications, improved claims processing, and to Petrina's point about trust in your employer, they also wanted improved employer support and a more empathetic approach to rehab and recovery. So the starting vision in January 2018, when we implemented our new workers' compensation claims service model was to design a claims process that was simpler, more transparent, and more effective. This was reflected in our vision and objectives to provide consistency at scale, improve support for injured workers, achieve return to work outcomes, segment claims for the needs of the customer, provide transparency and insights, and as commonly across both employers and workers, improve communications. So let me relay a story for the first day that the claims model was stood up, which was January 1st, 2018. And yes, we were open for business. So it was intended, as it was intended, a skydiving instructor who had been doing a tandem dive that morning with one of their clients, probably somebody who had a New Year's Eve resolution that, to learn skydiving, landed in a puddle of water and broke his back. A few short hours later, he called the support center where a case of claims advisor named Jan took his call. The customer is concerned about his treatment and how he was going to meet his ongoing financial obligations while he recovered. So the advisor lodged the claim, 
and reassure the customer of his immediate needs would be taken care of. He was pleased that we were there for him on the first day of the year and could reassure him about the report, support he would receive. Unfortunately, he did have to have a spinal fusion. But like any claims model design, it requires adjustment after implementation, and we've continued to make such adjustments. We've stabilized the model to provide improved support to workers with skilled case managers based on the complexity of their injury, communication and certainty for employers and workers throughout the claims life cycle, and the relevant transparency to all parties within, with sustainable return to work outcomes. So just a quick reminder on how the claims model works. We'll talk through the key aspects of the claim segmentation, which is designed to respond to the complexity of the claim and support the employer and worker who needs to recover and return to work. So after an injury, employers and workers are now able to notify of an incident or lodge a claim either online or giving them choice and empowering them to call and talk to a claims advisor. The questions asked are tailored to whomever is lodging the claim, whether it's the employer, the worker, or their representative. The portal asks psychosocial questions in addition to questions about the circumstances that are surrounding the injury. This could include whether the employer thinks it's a valid claim or even whether or not the employer gets along with the injured worker and vice versa. The combination of information gathered from the employer, worker, and treating doctor allows us to segment the claim into one of five segments. We encourage the lodgement via the portal as it allows us to enter early information capture and allows us to triage for a faster, more accurate allocation to the right segment of care and support. The information provided also assists in identifying risks and issues regarding liability. So currently about 70% of the claims start as a portal lodgement. The journey of the claim moves into claims management and as you can see on the slide, the different levels of support and care are dependent on how serious the claim is. Workers with spinal cord or brain injuries, amputations, burns, or permanent blindness are part of the workers' care program, and there's a, between 350 and 400 of those managed through, in context of our lifetime care business. The specialized segment is specifically for claims that need specialized attention or resources, such as mental health, fatalities, or complex injuries and incidents, such as the Lint Cafe siege. The port support segment is for claims that have expected to have more than two weeks off work and have identified to have one or more risk factors on a claim. Currently, these claims represent almost 70% of claims and have a dedicated case manager from the start of the claim. The empower and guide portion is most simply defined as medical only claims or claims where there's expected to be less than two weeks off work with no or minimal other risk factors. The claims model is supported through a back end claims management platform that integrates and streamlines claims management. This platform helps advisors and case management specialists to support the customers more effectively from the first point of contact and throughout the entire claims journey. Some of the advantages include automated administrative tasks on a single system, a triage engine for faster decision making and better claims management, straight through automating processing for simple service payments, transparency, self-service, and choice of engagement, either by phone, email, or portal, use of the ex uh, customer experience tracking tools, such as a CSTAT or a first call resolution, and allowing staff to be freed up to be more responsive to customer service. So I'll talk about three elements of this that are particularly customer-centric. The first one is the claims portal. As part of the technology, we have originally delivered a unauthenticated claims portal, and lodgement experience includes 85% give additional information outside the information required on the claim, and the entire process takes 10 to 15 minutes. Over 35% are lodged after hours or on weekends, which is up from 13% when we first launched this portal. 25% are lodged by the worker or their representative. This is well up from the traditional 5% of previous experience we'd heard about and that the customer feedback and a major hindrance to claiming was that workers' relationship with their employer, although all claims still go through a liability decision process. Also from customer feedback, we developed an online claims management portal launched in February this year. The secure portal gives employers and injured workers greater control over the management of their workers' compensation claims it's easy to use and allows you to lodge and manage claims 
and follow the progress of each claim in one central location. The benefits to employers and workers include access to a secure portal, account and user management, self-service to see the progress on the claim, view payments and request reimbursements, and look at return to work plans, injury management plans, and the doc documents relating to the claim. And now I'm going to get slightly geeky. And hopefully some people will understand this. So a key enabler of the service model is the identification of the level of support that a customer needs on the claim. And the triage model is based on a combination of business rules, data analytic models, which predict the complexity and types of claims, both at the commencement of the claim and ongoing. It consists of a triage engine algorithm, inclusive, as I said, of business rules, predictive analytics, and machine-based learning, but also a dedicated team of approximately 25 qualified health professionals. The risk profile of a claim is assessed against some 96 data points and 61 biopsychosocial factors. Beyond the injury itself, risk factors taken into account may include the demographics on the claim, including age, occupation, and location, psychosocial factors, including the in, whether the injured worker feels in control of their pain, situational factors, such as the distance from home to work. Support and service is then segmented in the service model for each individual with constant check-ins to see we're meeting the injured worker's needs. The approach is intended to result in ensuring the levels of care and management are matched to the circumstances and complexity of the claim, and providing the right level of support by saving time and money and increasing automation of simple claims, focusing the support on the more severe claims of the more complex injuries. As we continue to collect increased data points through the triage engine, the algorithm will continue to mature and increase its accuracy. As such, we have recently moved from logistic regression model, which presumes that there's representation of behavior regardless of the true state, to a random forest model, which does not presume an underlying linearity or shape of the data and is more suitable for handling the randomness and variability in the data and indeed the claims themselves. This diagram represents how the analytics and human component of the triage process come together from claims lodgement to treatment and recovery. The automated triage system works by looking through data that will filter for the most serious injuries first, those such as spinal injuries, brain injuries, severe burns, and blindness that need immediate attention by eye care's workers' care team. If the claim passes through that filter, it then looks for injuries relating to mental health, complex injuries, and fatalities. These, may, these claims are managed by our case management or specialized claims team and are about 5% of all claims. Then the system looks for injuries with claims durations anticipated to be beyond two weeks and also takes into account other risk factors such as whether the employer is not able to provide suitable duties, the employer concern has concerns regarding the claim, or English is not the first language of the worker. If the employer has no concerns about the environmental factors related to the incident or the claim and the worker feels in control of their pain, these are routed to claims advisors in the sports center to be dealt with. The system is smart, but it's not all about the system. We also have the dedicated triage specialists overseeing decisions made and looking for additional factors throughout the life of the claim that indicate that we need to intervene to get a better outcome. Importantly, the triage engine doesn't take away human decisions, rather enhances them by providing guidance to relevant claims advisors, advisors or claims management specialists, it provides the opportunity to prompt human intervention to decide the next best action on the claim. Again, as the system matures, it will provide increased accuracy of data analytics to support triage specialists who oversee the decisions. At the end of September, for all claims since February and now closed, 90% of claims had the same segment as lodgement as the final segment of when the claim completed. In addition, the median delay for the first segment to the second segment for those 10% that do move is less than 10 days, which has reduced down from 28 days in February. The final technology component I'd like to speak about is um, a system called ODG. So another way that technology supports the outcome of the claim is an integrated use of evidence-based medicine. As part of the platform, we have integrated this tool called ODG, and we have updated the system to include utilizing workers, New South Wales workers' compensation medical data. 
ODG is a de decision support tool that recommends return to work, recommendations for return to work and evidence-based treatment, gui treatment guidelines. The system provides clinical guidelines, analytical tools designed to improve and benchmark return to work, work performance, facilitates quality care, and assists in assessing the claim. It also ensures appropriate treatment is delivered, reduce, that is, reducing low-value care, and also um, reduces delay to treatment and ensures injured workers are adequately supported to achieve the best recovery. We implemented the customized ODG so a case manager is able to make more informed and evidence-based decisions around the treatments they are reviewing and improving. In the new year, we'll be implementing a function called the Treatment Analyzer on Outcomes Index, or TAOI, which synthesizes return to work metrics comparative to relative performance of each treatment on the return to work outcome. In other words, it draws correlation between treatment and return to work, although not causation. Combining the use of the outcome measures in combination with incident frequency and cost and it will design, is designed to auto-approve care that provides better outcomes and flag those treatments that need more manual improvement. So how do we continue to measure our success? We use a net promoter score. We have done something like 400,000 survey, surveys with about a 13% return, um, return rate. And we've been working hard to create a fairer system. We've improved the workers' experience over the last three years. Whilst this slide doesn't start until January, we, act, we know that since 2016, the worker experience has gone from a negative to the mid-20s sustainably. We are now focused equally on improving the employer's experience. And in the past three to six months, we've seen over a 50% improvement, although we still have a long way to go. For employers, the NPS score declined in May 2018, but has improved from May 2019 onward, with additional initiatives and actions for remediation, including outstanding wages, backlog reduction, and faster response times. The slide also shows the difference in NPS results from October 2019 for the, e the customer segments we talked about earlier, and this is for EML only. It might be worth noting that the support center has traditionally achieved better results and the specialized segment, unfortunately with the mental health claims, is still on a work in progress. So while there have been benefits to employers and injured workers, we know that these changes have not always been easy. Some of the challenges have include, included the pace of change, the scale of data quality issues, the service delivery consistency, and employers' perceived loss of choice. We also are in a headwind against some other external factors, such as changing work habits from the gig economy and the flexibility of working from home, legislat legislative changes, the 260-week benefit cap and medical exits, and superimposed inflation on medical expenses. So where are we going next? We have listened to employers who want choice in the system, and we are launching an improved claims operating model. So from the first quarter in 2020, the authorized, promo authorized provider model will be live, which will give large employers a choice of who provides their claims management services. I look forward to keeping you up to date as we continue to work towards a scheme that improves the experience and outcomes for our customers.